This is Akash Vani. In the program Money Talk, now we bring you a discussion on easing of inflation in India. The participants are Udayan Ray, economic analyst, and Anubha Rohatki, Akash Vani correspondent. India's Consumer Price Index or CPI based inflation eased to 4.7%, while the Wholesale Price Index or WPI based inflation fell to 0.92% for the month of April. To discuss the implications of this decline in inflation, we have with us Mr. Udyan Ray. Welcome to the program, Mr. Ray. Thank you so much. Udyan, the first question that I want to know from you is that the government releases CPI and WPI figures every month. So, what are the Consumer Price Index and Wholesale Price Index and how do they impact inflation? Well, to put it in very very simple words, wholesale price index reflects the inflation. Now, when we are talking about inflation, it's the rate at which the prices increase. A lot of people confuse it with they think that if inflation rate is going down, they think the prices are going down. That's not what it is. Inflation is the rate at which prices increasing. So, if something is hundred and it becomes hundred one, so one percent. In the next period, if it becomes 102, then it's not gone up by 1 percent. So therefore, the inflation rate has gone down, but actually the prices have gone up. So that's the first distinction, which is important. Now, wholesale prices are the prices which producers, primarily businesses and people who are, who are making inputs for businesses, they face. So it's essentially the inflation which a producer or a manufacturer or a good supplier, basically a business. is facing at the that's why it's called the wholesale price index it typically will have larger weightage in things like fuel and electricity and stuff like that now the composition the basket the number of items you are covering in a wholesale price index are not the items which a household will cover okay now retail price inflation or cpi consumer price is the inflation that you and i and other people who are listening to this program they face right and uh, again it's important to understand that when the inflation rate is coming down prices are not coming down so it's like a, you're driving a car and you've gone from for 40 kilometers an hour to 30 kilometers an hour you've moved ahead right you've not gone back so that's important now there's also a distinction that's made which normally when these prints come out these figures come out they don't come so you can have a basket which is for industrial workers and non manufacturing so there are you know a sort of distinctions made and you keep tracking these prices so this is the essential difference and this difference broadly exists across the world and people track it so broadly what is happening now in terms of the headline that you just read out that what you are finding is that the car which is moving at a higher gear or higher speed is gone down the speed has gone down and it's welcome Now for April 2023 the CPI or the retail inflation eased to an 18 month low to 4.7% and the WPI at 0.92% slipped into negative territory in fact for the first time in 33 months so what are the factors that contributed to this decline in inflation well if you ask me i would think that uh, number one the kind of steps the government or rather shall i say the reserve bank had taken in terms of raising interest rates they typically when you fall ill you are given a medicine sometimes you have to give them a better medicine now to fight inflation you have to give a better medicine where you know when you are ill you are not allowed to go out and do all the active things so it's like here also when inflation happens the idea is the central bank tries to reduce the economic activity a little bit so the essentially anuba one way of looking at inflation or price rises you've got money but you're not getting enough goods or service so if you want a haircut you are having to wait in a line therefore the person who's giving you a haircut is charging more or you want a mobile phone or a mobile accessory and uh, not enough is getting produced so therefore the person who's producing it is charging more so more money chasing fewer goods and services so that if you look at it in a very simplistic way there could be other reasons for inflation but when these things happen typically what governments try to do the better medicine that I was talking about is you try to reduce the demand a little bit make the people stagger their purchases moderate their spending a little bit so that the supply and demand comes to a okay sort of key now how do you do that you typically you raise interest rates because when you raise interest rates people who are borrowing people who are producing their things becomes a little more challenging for them and the activity comes down people also find it difficult to buy things pay hikes don't happen as much so overall this demand and supply cools down a little bit typically anuba what happens is when monetary authority does it it takes time 
for it to percolate down it's like a if you have, you have this filter coffee contraption apparatus you put in some coffee powder and some hot water and it takes time to percolate so that percolation time it has taken last year a lot of rate hikes happen in fact it's only recently that the rbi paused yes in the last Tho- those steps that were taken in the past are now showing up in a very prominent way in the beginning it will always seems that nothing is really happening but it is showing up so that's one second of course anuva is also the overall global economic scenario is such we have recently had exports the growth not looking so great so it's showing up you know because globally the growth has come down the outlook is not so great so that effort of bringing the economic activity to a more even keel as far as supply and demand is concerned that is happening automatically because of the global conditions so those two would be the major uh, reasons that i could immediately give on top of the mind i'm sure that other people would be able to add to the list but these i think would explain 50 to 60 if not 70% okay so like we were talking we are seeing that deflation in wti is there for the first time in 3 years so what happens when wti goes into negative territory that is one thing i want to know from you and do you expect this deflationary trend to continue well we should not lead Maybe too much into it in the past. This has also happened. In fact, Anuva, the great thing for our listeners is that there was a time when you know people used to get so excited or hassled by WPI numbers. But over a period of time, say about twenty years, consumer price inflation or retail inflation are the figures people are now talking about. So they are more representative. But this is not important. Yes, it's important. It's indicating things. will it remain like this i doubt it will remain it's also indicating to you that the sometimes it's also the fact that you have undergone a very high inflationary period and you know you cannot maintain that high price hike you know at some point people say that sorry i'm not going to buy this at this price i'm going to reduce the amount so therefore then the market adjusts to it they'll say that okay we are not going to raise the price so that's where the car which was going at 40 kilometers an hour automatically now comes down to 30 kilometers so economic activity when it is going to pick up again right now it's not as if it's lulled but you know that's the backdrop you know mm-hmm. the previous period you always measure inflation in comparison to what was existing in the previous period okay so there was a particular stage at which you were and you have reached at a particular stage and that is the rate change now if you are slowing down the economic activity is also slowing down but when it again is going to go up which typically will happens everywhere and is obviously bound to happen then again it will go up now the important thing for listeners to understand is low inflation is good but very very low inflation is showing anemic tendencies of the economy that's not what we want japan had low inflation and it's pretty much lost over 10 years you know it's just to the number two economy so it's not as if inflation is not a bad thing very high inflation is a bad thing it hits your pockets of everybody especially the poor it distorts your investment uh, the way you invest because you're losing value therefore you would want to buy things like gold and real estate and stuff like that that used to happen in the past but fortunately our runaway inflation periods have not been that much in our country and despite the kind of challenges we have faced our uh, kudos to the government they haven't let it go out of the the animal has not escaped the cage like it has happened in europe and, and in the us so if i understand correctly you're saying that the low wpi and deflation is more of a detriment uh, to for you so far as the manufacturer is concerned right but when you come to the common man how will deflation in wpi impact retail inflation in the months to come or will it affect they typically move in tandem but the numbers are so vastly different you remember last year we were clocking like 12 14% so sometimes what happens is you know if tomorrow analysis happen i don't be surprised if people say that it's because of the base effect because the last year it was so high and you compared it with this year in this period that's why it's come down so sometimes what happens is it's a statistical blip but typically they move in tandem because there are common elements in both of them so fuel would be there in both and stuff like that but uh, you won't find things like mobile services and some other things you know these baskets keep changing so they won't be there out there and typically what happens is some of these things which a retail consumer would be consuming their prices go up because services if you're using you will probably spend more on them and 40 to 50 years back our basket used to be of necessities food and other mm-hmm. things now as we have gone up the income ladder that basket has also changed there are things that we are now buying which we never used to buy in the past so uh, sometimes you can handle inflation better when your incomes go up so sometimes the capacity is there you can handle it 
In India, you can handle 6% inflation because you, we are used to it. Tell this to a, a person in yes. Britain and US, they will probably yeah, Typically, faint. 2% is yeah, uh, you know what yeah. they aim for. The Reserve Bank of India, in its last Monetary Policy Committee meeting in April, took a breather so far as the rate cut is concerned. Now, April figures are the last inflation print before the central bank's MPC meets for a review meet in June. So are we likely to see another pause by the central bank and the meeting? You know, and what are the other factors apart from inflation figures that are likely to affect RBI's decision on rate hike or interest rates? The only thing I can think of, within the country, I'm not seeing any reason why it should be done. Whatever they wanted to do is happening. But the spoilers are coming from outside. Suddenly a supply cut by OPEC or somebody which disturbs the oil market and the prices out there. Some kind of less than great development happens in the conflict in Europe. In the US, there's something that happens which has a knock-on effect. Apart from that, I would expect another pause because you can live with 4%. Anuba, if you look at 10 years on a rolling basis, like 10 years back today and last month, 10 years back, at that point, if you keep seeing it on a rolling basis, you will find that in the last at 10 year periods, the cumulative annually, what was the inflation rate? It was moved somewhere between 5.6 to 7.2. We can handle this. Consumers can handle it. Our managers and uh, corporates can handle it. But we don't want it to be 7. We want it in the range of 2 to 6, which is the RBI's band. Because what happens is, if you have a high inflation, then your pay hikes have to happen. Your investments have to grow at that rate. And uh, there are people at the bottom of the pyramid. We have a very significant population who are economically vulnerable. So it acts like a tax. It's a tax on people who cannot pay. So therefore, in our country, having low inflation is great. But we will always have, you see, historically, we have had inflation of this magnitude simply because there's always too much of demand and the supply is less. Whether it's uh, nurses, whether it's hospitals, whether it's mobile phones, we just are a very large country. Uh, with the inflationary trend showing decline and if it continues to move further south, what does it bode for the economy in terms of achieving a growth target for this financial year? Awesome, because you know, one is when you calculate something in nominal terms where you're not taking into account, inflation is factored in. Now, it can give you a very, very lopsided view. You might say that you've done great. When, when you adjust it for inflation, real figures, that is where your litmus test is there. So, if the inflation rate is low, it typically tends to boost economic growth. Stocks do well. Investments do well. You would trust your financial assets more. And a very quick question going forward, what are the factors that may have an adverse impact on these figures, inflation figures? As I said, it's going to bad news can only come from abroad. Uh, we are doing pretty well. Uh, maybe uh, some issues in the monsoon, but I really don't see something in the immediate future. The bad news can only come from outside unless we have a monsoon issue. And what are the factors that will help keep inflation in check? Basically, we, we make sure that we become more efficient with the supply chain, with the, the way we produce our grains and store it, uh, getting it to the market. If we get the supply chain, the supply is, is okay and we increase it, there's no disruption, you have inflation. Inflation is like a domesticated animal then. Thank you so much for joining us in the program. Thank you so much. You were listening to a discussion on easing of inflation in India. The participants were Udyan Ray, Economic Analyst, and Anuba Rohadgi, Akashwani Correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 928-909-4044.